Now, my next guest was just five years old when she and her parents were sent to a Nazi extermination camp in 1944. Tova Friedman, now 84, is one of the youngest survivors and she's sharing her remarkable story in a new book, The Daughter of Auschwitz, and she joins us this morning. Uh, Tova, it's an absolute pleasure to Thank meet you. you. Thank um, you so much for having we, me. It's it, it, absolutely our pleasure and the book, like we say, is truly remarkable. Um, and you have said that it was a cathartic experience to write it, deeply upsetting at times. Absolutely. But hugely important because you do not want the world to forget. And that was the, the basis of That's the book. Right. That's right. I want them not only to forget, um, it's sort of two things. Not to forget, hopefully it'll never happen again. Mm -hmm. So it's got two parts to it. Mm -hmm. And like we say, you were just five when when you and your parents were sent away. <coughs> exactly. And and you you say in the book how you remember your father's tears because it was almost you you knew what they, was... they were separating. Yes. And that's the first time for so what whatever happened. They were we were at least a family. Mm -hmm. You know, being a family, you can endure almost anything, mm -hmm. but being alone and separation. That's where the issue comes in. So I saw him crying for the first time, really. Yeah, uh, because the, uh, as the, as the grown-ups, they were trying to protect you, but right. th they knew what was happening. You witnessed atrocities that you can never unsee, Tova, um, and that must have been difficult reliving some of those for the book. Well, you know, I I spoke a lot, so I do a lot of speaking, but writing is is writing or thinking about having it written, mm -hmm. different experience, because you have to sort of be quiet, you have to think about it, you have to relive it, and you live it in your own privacy, and sometimes you can't sleep at night, sometimes I can't believe it really happened, mm -hmm. and then I think of my mother, how she handled a five-year-old, mm -hmm. and how I would handle a five-year-old, so it's a, it's a different experience from talking. It was a very difficult experience. Because you were sent with your mother and your father then was sent to another um, right, he camp. Went to Dachau. Yes. Yes. And you but you were with your mother and and oh, your, your mum was an incredibly strong woman. She was fabulous. Um yeah. and there was one there's one story I find really upsetting. It was your sixth birthday and your mum oh. had Stolen or yes. tried to hide a I little piece of my bread. My mom, I, it was sort of a consequence. She stole a, a potato mm -hmm. and then she um, uh, bartered it for a piece of bread, mm -hmm. which was the big prize, you know, with the bread. Mm -hmm. And when I got the piece of bread, I said, Oh, it's my, it, with a little piece of paper saying it's happy birthday. Mm -hmm. And I said, Oh, I'm six. I didn't know how old I was. And I hid it behind my clothing because it was in a little bag. I thought, I will eat it when I'm on my deathbed. This was like my insurance. It was the best gift you could get in Auschwitz is a piece of bread. Mm -hmm. so. She did everything to protect you. Um, right. Because when you arrived there, you were all stripped of everything, right. including your identity. Exactly. Uh, you were straight away tattooed right. with a number. Right. And that's what you thought your name was for long enough, Tova. That's what you wear, and that's you know, what you were known what's as. What's interesting about the tattoo was that I didn't know any numbers mm -hmm. because I haven't gone to any school. I didn't know what all these numbers, I didn't, I couldn't identify the word, uh, you know, 27,000 with a number. Mm -hmm. So I had to memorize something just by hearing it because I just, it well, was very a, scary. A, a lot of other survivors chose to, to get rid of those tattoos. I know, yes, and but, I don't blame them. And, but you chose not to. I, yes. When I was 12 years old, a doctor in, in America said to me, I'm going to give you a present. I'm going to take it off. You won't even notice it. There'll be a tiny scar. And, you know, I was only 12. But I remember saying, like, if it's right here, I wouldn't take it off. 
because I felt even then that I have to share this. Nobody wanted to hear it. That's true. In the, you know, in the 50s, nobody heard, nobody wanted. But I wanted to share it with the world to see what happened. Yeah, and now you are, and it's still here. Yes, Sofa. You've absolutely. got it on your, on your arm here. Um, and, oh, let me tell you. When I got the number, the woman was about 18, 19. Mm -hmm. uh, she said to me, I'll give you a very uh, neat number, very neat and small. So if you ever survive, you could get a long shirt, long mm -hmm. sleeve shirt, and nobody would know. Mm, goodness. So she already then what, thought it would be something to be ashamed of. Yeah, she knew, Yeah. Uh, if, if only more. And then she was killed. Oh, goodness me. Um, so you're, the, the Allied powers started to close in on these camps eventually. Um, it took a, took a long time, as we know. Um, they started shooting everyone. They didn't want any witnesses within right. the camp. Right, no Nazis. witnesses. Um, and your mother thought the only way to in some way have a chance of getting out of there was to play dead. Right. And that's, that is to what stay there. Right. saved right. both of your lives, in fact. Because, you know, she saw what it looked. Everybody was lined up for walking to get out because the allies were coming. And she, she, she knew herself. She knew that she couldn't walk. She was starving. She was all bloated. She was just, no way would she make it. And it was January, freezing, and, and the ground was full of snow. And she knew she would die. She didn't want me to be left alone. Her words were to me, I don't want you to be left alone in this world. This is not a world for children. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then she asked me if I will die with her in Auschwitz, mm -hmm. not to go anywhere. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I said, absolutely, yes. Of course. Remarkably, Tova, you got out of there with your mother. Even more miraculously, you made your way back to Poland yes. where you managed to reunite with your father. And suddenly, it, it, there was hope again. And it, you then moved to America, and I'm jumping forward a few years yeah, now, but yeah, you moved to... A lot of things a, happened a lot before of things, that. Of course <laughs> yes. they did. But you, you moved to New York and um, in some way tried to start to build a life again, which I'm guessing certainly your mother and your father never thought was going to be possible for any of you. For them, it was very hard, especially for my mother. My father did much better. My mother couldn't. She, she just could not, she couldn't get used to the idea that her whole family was killed. Mm -hmm. She just, she couldn't sleep. She didn't want to eat. She didn't want to learn English. She just mm -hmm. did not want to be part of this world anymore. Mm -hmm. As if she did her job. She saved me, she was done. Mm -hmm. Interesting. It is. I'm uh, considering she passed away in her 40s as well. Right. Um, it, it, it is. It's, considering everything that she had been through, she was so badly beaten in the right. camp as well that you Just, believe that that did contribute to her early, right. her early death. Right. Um, a remarkable story, Tova. And like we said, we have only touched the surface. Um, uh, just in recent times, interestingly, and, and who knew that, that TikTok was going to be, oh, become yes. part of your world, <laughs> Tova? But I do have to mention it because you're, you're, it was an important reason why it came about. Your grandson was, was learning things at school it's and so realising not that many people know the full history. You know and funny. you are the one person on the face of this planet right now that can tell it from Absolutely. the heart. And you've embraced TikTok because of it. You know what's wonderful about this whole thing? I'm at the age where many of my friends aren't here anymore. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, in the Bible, we were given 70 years, and those who deserve it get another 10, which is mm -hmm. 80. Well, I'm past that. Yes. I've well, already deserved it. So, but if anyone you deserves wonder, it, it's you. Who's going to tell our story when mm -hmm. we're gone? Yeah. We're the last generation, and I'm one of the youngest. And then, all of a sudden, like our grandchildren, not all of a sudden take on our story yeah. and continue it. Mm -hmm. And I cannot tell you the happiness this brings me and, and the comfort, mm -hmm. I think, to all the Holocaust survivors that the next generation will remember, remember. us. Well, it's an absolutely, truly uh, remarkable book and it's a pleasure to meet you this morning. Thank so you. Thank you for I'm sharing so happy your story. That 
that and you invited me. Th you're Thank you're more you very than much. Welcome. Thank you. The daughter of Outstitch is out on Thursday. Don't forget, you can watch full episodes of Lorraine on the ITV Hub and all the best clips, compilations, and playlists right here on our channel. Just subscribe now and you'll never miss an upload. Click here to watch another video similar to this one or click here to head to our channel's homepage to explore all of our exciting videos.